We've already seen that there are four subtypes of the past tense. But how do we know which one to use where? I have good news for you. You can easily identify them with the help of time clues. Remember that the GMAT is a standardized test and hence the clues and the ways in which the sentences are formed are also standardized. Now, before we dive into time clues, let me tell you one more thing about how tenses are tested on the GMAT. The GMAT doesn't differentiate between perfect and perfect continuous, which means that the time clues and situations will be similar. Now, that's a sign of relief, isn't it? Why? Because this immediately reduces the number of past tense structures from 4 to 3. Now that we have this good news, let's dive right into the time clues. First, let's begin with the past tense and its aspects. Simple past tense speaks about a time before the present time. The time clue for the simple past tense would be a specific reference to the past. For instance, you would see phrases like yesterday, in 1963, at 8am, etc. in your sentences. Easy, isn't it? Next up is the past continuous tense. Let me give you a simple hack to find the time clue for the same. The time clue is another simultaneous action in the simple past. There will be two actions and both of them would have happened at the same point of time. One of them would be a static action and the other would be a continuous action with reference to the static action. So the second part would be in the simple past. Let's look at our example. In the past continuous tense, our example would be John was swimming when the guest arrived. Here, the second action, when the guest arrived, is in the simple past. The first sentence indicates that the action was ongoing at the point when the second action happened. Moving on to the next aspect, past perfect tense and past perfect continuous. As I told you earlier, the GMAT doesn't really differentiate between these tenses. Hence, the time clue is the same. For these tenses, there would be two actions. Let's name them action 1 and action 2. Action 1 would have happened before action 2, which makes them sequential. Now that's your time clue. To make things easier to understand, let's look at an example of past perfect tense. By the time his friends arrived at the stadium, John had swum a mile. In this example, the first action would be in its past perfect form and the second action would be in the simple past. With that, we are done with past tense and its aspects. I hope that was easy, wasn't it? That's it from my end from now. I hope we don't have any more reasons to be tense about tenses, especially the past. If you do, however, feel tense, I'm always there to help you. See you.